Dear friends, we are going to first have a look at the setup of uh, diesel engine uh, test strip. Uh, we know that this is a diesel engine and uh, this is a single cylinder diesel engine. Uh, what you find over here is uh, the diesel engine has an arrangement for uh, measurement of various parameters. Okay, so this thing which you see over here. It is called as a dynamometer. It is an eddy current dynamometer, and this eddy current dynamometer would help us uh, calculate the brake power of the engine. Uh, brake power, you know, is basically the mechanical output of the engine. So, with the help of the eddy current dynamometer, we would be calculating the brake power. Uh, we know that it is important for us to measure the fuel consumption of the engine, and the fuel which is consumed by the engine. This fuel, if you look at this uh, fuel injector, and if you just go and press this uh, uh, fuel pipe, you would find that uh, here, if you come to the setup over here, this is collected to this uh, fuel tank, and there is a burette over here. Okay, so using this burette, which is calibrated in ML, uh, we can measure the fuel consumption. How much fuel is consumed by this diesel engine? So for that, what we need to do is that we need to use a stopwatch, or you can use your mobile also for uh, noting now how much is the drop in this uh, fuel level in this burette uh, in a particular time. Let us say for 10 seconds, how much ml of fuel is consumed by this engine. So once you get the volume flow rate of this, we can calculate the mass flow rate of the uh, uh, fuel that is diesel in this diesel engine, right? So this is one important uh, thing in this setup. The other important thing in this setup is to know how much is the air consumed. Now, if, if you look at this, this is the pipe. It is, uh, it is connected to the intake manifold, and this pipe is connected uh, via the orifice. There is an orifice over here. So, via the orifice meter, it is connected to a manometer. So, if you come from the front side of this, so you will find that this. This intake manifold through which the air enters this diesel engine is connected via this manometer. So wh what does this manometer do? Manometer would help you calculate the height in the water level, uh, height of water column H, H, uh, HW. And using uh, the basic fluid mechanics rule that HA rho A is equal to HW rho W, you can calculate the height of air column and by knowing the coefficient of discharge, of this orifice, you can calculate the mass flow rate. So basically, one needs to understand that this is the pipe which uh, basically sends the air into this engine. This is the pipe which sends the fuel into this engine. And as a result of the combustion which happens in this engine, we are going to get an output which is measured by this dynamometer. So this is the basic thing we must know for calculating the performance of this engine. The other very interesting uh, or important information is we are going to calculate this uh, performance for various loads. Now, how do you change the load? So, for that, here you see that there is an arrangement. If you come from the front, you will see that this arrangement is basically for your loading of the dynamometer. So, if you change this, we are, we are going to change the load. And for different loads, we can take the readings. Which readings we can take? We can measure the fuel consumption for different loads. We can measure the air consumption for different load and accordingly we can calculate the air to fuel ratio for different load. So this could be an interesting thing to know. The other thing is we can know uh, what is the brake power of this engine at different loads. Uh, a very important parameter in the diesel engine is to understand how the energy is coming in and how the energy is going out of this. Right? So for that we draw what is known as a heat balance sheet. Right? So for calculating the heat balance sheet. Uh, if you look at the setup, you see over here that this is the exhaust pipe. This is the exhaust pipe that is the products of combustion would be uh, coming out of this engine from here. And this exhaust pipe is connected to a heat exchanger. So this is the heat exchanger and this heat exchanger is called as an exhaust gas calorimeter. Now what happens here is this heat exchanger, you find that the gas is coming in into this heat exchanger and then it is sent out uh, to the surroundings. So we are measuring the temperature of the gas which is coming out of this engine that is which is entering this 
uh, finally which is entering into this uh, 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 heat calorimeter or heat exchanger and then we are also measuring the temperatures which are going out. So you see that there are thermocouples connected, okay, in and out of this. So this thermocouples, what they actually record is, they record uh, four different temperatures. One is they record the gas temperatures entering the calorimeter and leaving the calorimeter and they are also recording the water temperature. Now where come the water comes in? So if you look at this setup, you will find that the water is entering this uh, this device. Okay, Where from this water is coming and how do you measure the flow rate? So for this you will see that this calorimeter is connected to this flow meter. Okay, so this flow meter, this flow meter uh, will give you the uh, flow rate of the water which is entering into the calorimeter. Now what to do with that? So the water enters the calorimeter and when the water enters the calorimeter it is going to cool the gas, right? So if you know the flow rate and if you know the exhaust, uh, if you know the temperatures across heat exchangers, you can calculate mass of exhaust gases and specific heat of the exhaust gases which you can use for doing the heat balance sheet, right? Another important thing is uh, we must know that this engine is rejecting the heat to the coolant. Now this is a water cooled, if you look at this engine, you will find that this is a water cooled engine. So there is an engine jacket and through that engine jacket there is a flow of uh, water, right? So when the water flows through the engine jacket, uh, you will see that this water which is entering into this jacket, it will get heated up and you can measure the flow rate using this flow meter. So using this flow meter you can record how much is the water which is going through the jacket of this engine and what happens to that water, this water would accept the heat which is rejected by the engine and the water would get heated up. Again we can note down the temperatures. Now the temperatures you see that there are thermocouples, so all these are thermocouples, right? This is a thermocouple, this is a thermocouple, right? You will find that this is a thermocouple, this thermocouple, this thermocouple. Now all these thermocouples, they are going to record the temperatures. But how they are recording the temperatures? You will see that those temperatures, they are recorded in all this uh, and it, they are indicated by this volt meter. Now you are basically getting the readings in volts, right? And then there is a conversion factor. So using this conversion factors, you can uh, uh, convert this to temperature degree Celsius, right? So if you get some, let us say if you get a reading of 1, then you can multiply this and you will get a temperature of 26 degrees centigrade, so on and so forth. So you have different temperatures, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. These temperatures are what? So these temperatures you must know, they are basically the temperatures uh, of different things. Like for example, uh, the T1 over here is basically the temperature of water at the inlet of the engine jacket. And you know that the water which is entering the engine jacket would be closer to the ambient temperature. Similarly, T2 would be the temperature. So the T2, the reading when you get T2 here, when you are changing this and when you get the corresponding reading here, that T2 would be the water temperature which is exiting the jacket, engine jacket. And you know that when the water exits the engine jacket, the water would get heated up, right? Uh, then there is a uh, T3 which is the temperature of water at the inlet of the calorimeter, right? So calorimeter as I said, calorimeter is basically having two fluids. One is the exhaust gas which is coming to the calorimeter and other is the coolant or the water which is entering into this calorimeter and when the water enters into this calorimeter, the water gets heated up. So uh, the water which is entering into the calorimeter would be at the room temperature. But when it leaves the calorimeter, it would be heated up. So that T4 is the temperature of the water at the outlet of the calorimeter, right? Then the gases which are let out, the gases which are let out, that is T5, okay? So T5 is the temperature of the gas which is let out from the uh, engine, right? And T6 is the temperature of the gas which is let out from the calorimeter. Now why do we require the gas temperature? Uh, one thing is when you uh, why you require T5 this this temperature which is uh, recorded this temperature is basically the gas temperature and the gas temperature minus the ambient temperature into the mass of exhaust gas and the CP of exhaust gas would help you calculate how much is the energy which is lost by this engine via the exhaust gases.
Similarly, if you want to know how much is the energy which is lost by the jacket water, you must know the mass of the water, Cp of the water and delta T across this uh, jacket, Indian jacket. Okay. So all these things help you calculate uh, the uh, heat balance sheet of the engine. Now what you must keep in mind is, uh, if, if in your exam you are asked to calculate a particular thing, right? So for example, if I ask you to calculate only the year to fuel ratio, if the year to fuel ratio is to be calculated, then you understand that year consumption, we need to take the manometer reading and you need to take this time for 10 ml. There is no other reading which would be required. However, if you are to calculate the brake power, then how do you get the brake power? So for calculating the brake power, as you have seen, you must know the speed, right? Uh, the load, right? You must know the speed, you must know the load and using brake power is 2 pi nt by 60,000, you can calculate the brake power. So for that, you must simply note down the speed and load, right? Without taking the fuel consumption reading and air consumption reading. Because why do we require fuel consumption and air consumption if you are uh, interested only of brake power? Similarly, if you are asked to calculate the energy balance or, or say you are asked to calculate only the heat which is lost by the exhaust gases. Now if you are to calculate the heat lost by the exhaust gases, your interest would be, you must know the flow meter reading of this calorimeter and you don't require this reading. If you want to calculate the heat loss by the jacket water as well as by the uh, uh, exhaust gases, then, then and then you need to know the flow rate of both the engine jacket as well as the calorimeter and also the corresponding temperature readings. So by and large, if uh, a trial is to be conducted on this and a particular parameter is to be calculated, then the appropriate readings are essential. Okay. So Morris sir, please come over here. Morris sir has done a wonderful job of recording this uh, and uh, whatever uh, video we are able to make is because of his efforts. So I thank Morris sir for his excellent job of recording. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.